What's up guys, so today we're going to be talking about Playlist Push. Is it a scam? Is it legit? Is it a good way to get Spotify streams? Get a lot of questions about this one because it's one of the most popular Spotify playlist promotion companies out there. And I went ahead and ran a campaign with them about two weeks ago. In this video, I'm going to get through some of the first results. So keep watching and let's dig in. So if you're following along, you know that I test out Spotify promotion companies. I actually have a pretty popular blog post where I list what I think are the 12 best Spotify promotion companies at the moment. And this year I'm updating that list. And so I'm going through and I'm testing all the companies on that list again. And I'm testing some new companies that I haven't tried yet. And so this is part of that whole like figure out what works in 2023 thing that I'm trying right now. So Playlist Push is one of my favorite companies in the Spotify promotion space. I've known their founder, George, for a couple of years now. Um, I've run a bunch of campaigns with them. And yeah, historically, they've just done a really good job. So I'm interested to get into the data with this one and see how things shake out. One disclaimer to start, they want me to wait like 30 days after the campaign to review the results. I might do another video at a later time to show, hey, here's what happened to the results 30 days after the campaign because you do get a clear sense of how things impacted the algorithm and how like being on playlists for a month impacted your songs. But I think there's some pretty clear findings from the first few weeks. I think it's been like 12 or 14 days on the playlist. And so with that said, I'm going to get into the data for right now. Then maybe we'll come back and look at it in a few months too. But let's flip around to the computer screen and I'll show you what's up. Okay, so here I am logged into my Playlist Push portal, and I'm actually going to put up a blog post that walks through in more detail like what the launch and the setup process was like. It's pretty slick. They basically pair you up with genres for your song, and then they take care of all the submission to curators, so it's all automated on their end. But here are the results. For now, we got all our reviews in, and the first thing that I'll say is that this is like a slick interface, but I always just think that curator reviews are so dumb. <laughs> as, a, as a curator myself, uh, we review songs at Two Story Melody. We get submissions on Submit Hub. It's just really hard. All I'll say is take curator feedback with a grain of salt. I'll give you like an example. Not to throw any of these people under the bus, but let's see. Like I found the verses. Great, great, great. I found the verses a bit too long. Like, I, you feel like as a curator that you have to say something about why you aren't gonna accept the song, but you just end up making something dumb up. Like Tom's not gonna go back and be like, "Oh, next time I'll write shorter verses." It's just, it is what it is. Curator feedback, I get the idea of it, but it's almost never valuable. That said, this is a slick interface. Um, you can see, like, here's all the people we were submitted to. I think there were twenty some. And we got 12 added to 12 playlists. So you can see what it looks like if they did add us to a playlist. Here's one of the biggest ones, best acoustic guitar songs. And so like you click that button. I can get feedback on their feedback. And then it comes up with this thing. Like here's the playlist you got added to, some stats about it, and their feedback. You can't chat back and forth with the curator. You just get to rate them. So overall, this is a pretty good campaign. Um... I would say it's on the better side of things from what I've seen with Playlist Push, like about a 50%-ish approval rate. But the key thing, obviously, is how good are the actual playlists we got placed on. So, And what did those do for the streams and for the music? So I'll flip over to the Spotify for Artists for the song next. And you can see it came out last month. I'm filming this in February. This was January of 2023. And it's up to 15,000 streams. Now, in fairness, Tom racked up a lot of these, like, if we go to last 12 months, you kind of get the idea. Like, so he got a spike on release day, and then it was kind of drifting down. And then here's where we started the playlist push campaign. You see it has, like, another spike. And this will probably remain at a higher level for the next three weeks, however long we stay on those playlists. And then it'll be telling where things fall off to. But, with that said, let's take a look at what some of the playlists are doing. Actually, first, let's go to the engagement. I'll just show you... Um, one of the typical things with playlisting campaigns is that you don't get great engagement because if you think about it, people are listening to a playlist, like they're not super engaged with every song in the playlist. They might have it on in the background. So you generally see like your saves and your streams per listener stats decrease during a playlisting campaign. You can actually see that that's not 
really well let's see here's streams for listener so like you'll see that's not really the case i mean it dips a little bit here um, but it stays pretty constant around like 1.6 1.5 which is this is actually weird i'm not sure why it's saying 2.5 and then it's clearly not an average of 2.5 but you can see that it didn't dip significantly so that's that's a good sign so then let's go back let's go back to the song here and let's take a look at some of the playlists that it's on So you can see this is going to list like the top third party playlists. And this is a playlist that actually I need to talk to Tom about this. I'm not sure how he keeps getting on. This is like a random playlisting company that keeps adding his music, which is nice, I guess. Um, this is a playlist push playlist. Winter Chill 2023 is a playlist push playlist. Positive Music and Folk Indie. Those are all playlist push playlists. And you can see almost 2,000, almost 1,000, 500. So like right there, you at least have 35, 3,600 plays. And over the next three weeks, that'll probably go up. I'm expecting this campaign to generate like, and there's more here. These are also a playlist push. I would say it's probably going to generate in the neighborhood of like 20,000 streams in the in the month. That might, we'll see. I have, I'll make another video later, but that's pretty good. Not bad. Um, it was a $300 campaign, so that's about what I would expect. And I would say for the most part, these are all pretty good playlists. So I pulled up these playlists like here. One of the first things I'll do to evaluate a playlist is just like scroll through and see if I think the song, like here's the song, if it makes sense in the context. This one is probably actually the worst one. Positive Music 2023. Happy, upbeat, positive music compilation like that's actually not a good fit for tom's song really <laughs> so this isn't a great one and it's also not a huge playlist um but then we have best acoustic guitar songs this one let her go classic um road tripping it's a lot of big name artists but then it's also a huge playlist you can tell a lot of curators do this where they'll like top make it top heavy with these big songs and then down at the bottom like they'll put in these random people who I don't know, including my brother, who I do know. So there's Tom at 73. So he's still getting plays from this, but it's kind of like lumped in with these big bands and artists. So that's okay. I think genre-wise, it's pretty good, um, but it's not like in the indie realm. Then you got Winter Chill. This one is actually, I think, kind of right in the spot that he wants to be. It's a little bit more indie, and it's a little bit more chill. And then Folk Indie, this is like perfect. It is a folk song. It is indie. And there it is at number six. It's been a good playlist for him. So just to show you, like, that's just a looking at some of the songs on the playlist. And I would just pro tip, go through and listen. If you don't know the songs on a playlist, go through and listen and make sure that your song actually fits. And that'll give you a good idea of is this a good placement or not. Okay. Um, but to do a little bit more digging under the placement so far, I plug them into some of my favorite playlist analysis tools and so we have this is artist tools this is a really good one for finding curator information it's also very good for showing like the data on a playlist but they don't index every playlist on spotify so this is best acoustic guitar songs you can see it comes up with some playlist data three things i'm going to look at here first is high quality this is just them saying like it has a lot of monthly listeners it generally is growing and it is popular all good things. It's just kind of like a high level look at, is this a good playlist? Their take is yes, it's high quality. And I like to look at genres. So this is a good tell of whether or not your song actually fits. So I would say like indie pop, Brighton indie, they pull all these like Spotify deep genres, Beatlesque. that I didn't even know that was a genre, but I, I get what it means. I wouldn't say Tom's song is Beatlesque, but I would say it fits like indie pop. I don't know what Brighton indie is, but maybe it fits that. I would say it's like in this range, but this isn't like nailing it on the head. The other thing I'd say is this is you want all playlists that you're added to to look something like this, where they just have a steady forward growth curve. Um, if they don't, if they have drops or sudden spikes, that is a big sign that a playlist might be botted. This looks like it's somehow it's naturally grown. They might be running ads to it. It might be search. I mean, actually, if you scroll down here, you can look at keyword data. So this is probably heavily grown through search because you can see it ranks first for acoustic guitar songs and second for guitar songs. So it ranks for some good keywords in the U.S., which is also a good sign that it is a healthy playlist if Spotify is showing it in search results. The other one I pulled up 
on Artist Tools was the Folk Indie one, and you can see it's not quite as smooth a growth curve, um, partly because it's, I think it's actually a little bit smaller of a playlist, yeah. So things tend to smooth out a little bit more at size. But you can see even like the drops, it's only like minus two, minus three. So I'm not super worried about that. Um, this one actually hits the nail on the head for genres. Folk pop, perfect. Ambient folk, perfect. You know, I was, <laughs> when Tom made this song, I was like, that's a Baroque pop song right there. I don't, there's so many genres, it's crazy. Um, this is also a high quality list. Um, and then I don't think this one ranks for any keywords, so it's probably being grown with ads or there's some other traffic source, but it doesn't seem to be botted. All the signs suggest that this is a good playlist. It's definitely genre relevant. And then let's see the, and then the last one I'll look at is not available on artist tools, but I have it pulled up here on spot on track, which offers a little bit less data, but you can basically see like, if you look at the whole forever growth curve um it's just steadily gone up these are probably <laughs> yeah they pretty much exactly the growth points coincide with this is winter chill and you'll see here like when it's winter it gets more followers they're probably running ads to it in the winter and also it's seasonal so it makes sense but this is a healthy growth curve so this playlist looks good too and those are the top those are the top three or four biggest playlists that he got on, and all those playlists look really good. They're For the most part, they're genre-relevant, and the growth curves are all really solid. So the results from Playlist Push this round looking pretty good. So those are my quick takeaways so far, just a few weeks in. In another three weeks, we'll have a better sense for how the song is performing in the long term, but like I said, so far, so good. Pros of Playlist Push. So if you're thinking, should I try Playlist Push for my song? Um, the pros are that it is, it's about as genre relevant as I've found in a playlist pitching service. They do a really good job. They have a really big curator database and it's automated based on the genre and the references to your song. So they do a pretty good job of getting you on playlists that make sense for you to be a part of. And that tends to lead to higher engagement on playlists. Like you saw how his uh, streams per listener didn't drop that much during the campaign, that's a good sign that he's fitting in well on those lists. Um, relatedly, like the playlists all look pretty healthy. They have good growth. Um, they have good engagement metrics. They all look pretty good. And then Playlist Push is just a slick interface and good experience. Like there are a lot of companies out there that are not as developed as Playlist Push. They're a lot more manual, which is good, but you're putting a lot more faith in the customer service team. Post Push has a, has a good customer service team, um, but they also just are really easy to use. And it's like using, I don't know, like a tech platform instead of like an Excel spreadsheet or I guess that is a tech platform, but you get the idea. They're easy to use. Um, it kind of makes you feel like they know what they're doing. And that's because they, they do know what they're doing. They've been in the game for like as long as anybody has been in the game. That said, there are a few reasons you might not want to use Playlist Push. Um, the biggest is that there are no guaranteed results. A lot of these playlisting companies will offer a guarantee, not in the fact, the good ones at least, not in the fact that you'll get on a specific playlist, but that if they don't get you a certain number of placements or streams or whatever, you'll be refunded, like the difference of whatever they, so if they promise 10,000 streams and they deliver 7,000, they'll refund you 30% of the campaign. Playlist Push does not do that. I have run multiple campaigns with them where they've gotten no results, and that's just part of the risk that you take. They are one of the best at getting genre-relevant results, so it's like risk-reward, but that is a risk that all the curators reject you with lame feedback. And then last of all, they're relatively pricey. I mean, they're honestly kind of middle of the pack, but I think they're on the higher end of the middle of the pack. So this campaign was as entry level as it went and it was just i want to say it was like 284 dollars or something like that um which there are plenty of spotify promotion services out there that will get you started for cheaper than that i will say that overall i think the cost is worth it with playlist push just because they have such an extensive curator network and then the last thing i think you should consider just in general is that playlisting campaigns are always going to spike your streams and decrease your engagement per stream so you have to know that going in um, you should not expect to, that everyone's going to be saving, everyone's going to be streaming your song multiple times. You're going to get a lot of just straight streams. Playlists are the best way to just get cost-efficient streams. But then the proof of whether a campaign is successful is in how well it does in the long term, how well your song performs over the long term. Like, Does it keep 
getting streams or was that just a spike and then back down to nothing and if that's the case probably not worth paying for i think playlist push is one of those companies that can get you some solid momentum um but yeah i guess i'll check back in 30 days and maybe i'll put together another video to show how the song is performing them but overall my verdict is these guys are still good at what they do it's probably worth your time if you have the budget and if you're willing to take a risk and if you want streams so thanks for watching and good luck out there